Okay, this is example 3.3. And now we're looking at calculating what we call energy. Specifically, it's a type of energy called kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the energy that exists when a mass, something that has mass, is in motion, has a speed or a velocity. It's a very easy thing to calculate. We just say that the kinetic energy, K sub E, sorry, KE, is equal to one half times the mass of the object in motion times the speed squared. Now we can also sort of change the notation a little bit and put the two underneath. So mv squared over two would be another way of putting it. Okay. So energy is essentially the capacity of something to do work. So if something has energy, there is some ability for it to do work, which we looked at work in the previous examples. Okay. So let's take a look at the car. Notice that the mass is important, right? The more massive a particle is or an object, the more kinetic energy it has. But also notice the speed is even more important, at least under some circumstances, because it's not just the speed, it's the speed squared, okay? So doubling the speed has a huge effect on the amount of kinetic energy that an object has. So think of kinetic energy as the, as the energy that something has when it's in motion. So we have the mass, 1,000 kilograms. We have the speed, 10 meters per second. So that would be 1 half times 1,000 kilograms times 10 meters per second, quantity squared. OK? So really what we have is 1,000 times 100, which is 100,000, divided by 2, which is, it looks like it's about 50,000. Now, let's remind ourselves of the unit. Kinetic energy has the same units, essentially, as work does, because they're both measures of something to do with energy. So the units are typically, again, kilogram meters squared per second squared, or newton meters, or joules. OK, all three of those are good. I'm going to put joules here. And that would be perfectly fine, 50,000 joules. So that's how much kinetic energy the automobile has when it's moving at 10 meters per second, which is around 22 miles an hour. Now, very often, and in the case of the textbook, when the numbers get very large, like tens of thousands, it's very common to start using prefixes. So remind yourself, you know, you've got this one prefix called kilo which is 1,000, and in exponential notation, it's 10 to the third. We've got mega, which is a million, which is 10 to the sixth. Now, if you take a look, you got 50,000. So if I move this over three places to the left, that would be 50 times 10 to the third joules. And 10 to the third is a kilo. So I can write this as 50 kilo joules. And that's what your textbook does. They say essentially that once you start getting into the tens of thousands of joules, it's more convenient to represent the amount of energy in kilojoules as opposed to joules. So what I did was I said essentially 1,000 is a kilo. So if I move it over three, I get 50. And now we know we're going to have kilojoules instead of just joules. We could have also do mega, but for mega, you would need to move it six places. So if I move it over one, two, three, four, five, now I got to add a zero. So I have 0 0.050. 0. Now you could put mega joules because I moved it six places. Six places is mega, three places is kilo. 0.05, not as convenient as 50. We're looking for numbers that are counting numbers, essentially. 1, 5, 10, 50, 100, not 0.01 or 0.02 or 0.03. So that's why your textbook uses kilojoules as opposed to joules.